Hello YouTube, Steve here, Speak Fan, uh, back again with another video. It's been a little bit less than a week since I did my last video. This is another Laserdisc ad video. I've got a pretty significant uh, shipment in in the last week uh, from uh, two large collections from two different sellers on eBay and one single Laserdisc. And I'm uh, pretty excited about it, and I'm pretty excited about showing you <laughs> all the stuff that I uh, picked up on eBay and uh, it's a lot of stuff I'm hoping I'm really gonna try to go fast because I don't want to take up too much of your time uh, the first thing is something that I'm really really excited about this this is a, uh, a film that I own on DVD it was part of the Val Luton collection box set that came out back in 2005 or 6 and uh, the Criterion collection actually put this out on Laserdisc, and I was very surprised to learn that, and so I had to get a copy of it, and it actually has a really cool commentary track, which was not featured on the DVD. Um, I own this on Laserdisc, uh, I forget, from a different company, but it doesn't look nearly as nice, and it doesn't have any of the special features that this has. It is Jacques Tourneur's 19... what year did this come out? 1942 horror classic Cat People, of course produced by Val Luton, who was given a slew of titles for horror films at RKO, and they said, please make films out of these titles. Things like Cat People, uh, The Leopard Man, I Walked with a Zombie, being one of my favorites, and uh, what he actually did was he created really atmospheric, expressionist sort of, expressionistic I guess is the right way to say, um, real creepy films that, while they have everything to do with the, the title, they don't really. It's, it's all a play on the imagination. You think you might see something but you're not sure. A lot of light and shadow and sound really feature into his films that he produced. Uh, this was again directed by uh, Jacques Tourneur. This features a commentary track, too. Let me see where the commentary is. Bruce Eder. Or is it Bruce Eder? I don't know. I'm sorry. And that was not repeated on the, uh, on the, on the DVD. So, I'm um, very excited to have this. It's a great film. If you haven't seen it, please, please watch it. <clears throat> okay, uh, now for the first collection I received. This first shipment. This is from Laserdisc Vault who um, really, 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 um, they don't sell anything that's uh, not really nice. These, their releases, I don't think, are have any kind of uh, uh, faults in them. Uh, their covers are really, really nice and sharp. They're a little more pricey, but you can find some pretty good deals. And if you spend $50, you get free shipping, which I like. <clears throat> so, anyway, this is a film that I actually own on Blu-ray. From the Twilight Time, it's limited to 3,000 copies. Now, I got it a couple years ago. I'm pretty sure it's still available. I don't think this is a hugely demanded film. But I really fell in love with it when I went to Noir City 13. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it was Noir City 11, my bad. Uh, in San Francisco. It's a film noir fa uh, film festival. And this was shown, and, and this movie actually takes place, it was filmed in, in San Francisco. And I fell in love with it. It's a great film. It stars uh, Glenn Ford and Lee Remick. Um, with also Stephanie Powers is in it as well. It's directed and written by Blake Edwards and a great score from Henry Mancini. It is Experiment in Terror. It's a two-disc set distributed by Image. RCA Home Entertainment. Columbia Pictures, whatever. Sorry. Uh, just Glenn Ford right there. Lee Remick. And is that Stephanie Powers? That's Stephanie Powers. Actually, at Noir City, I was I actually picked up the poster for this, and it was signed by... I don't know if you can see it back there. Kind of. Right there. Signed by Blake Edwards. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, that was... I guess, yeah, back in 2013. So anyway, I was very happy to get this. It looks great for its age. This was released in 86, this, this Laserdisc, so pretty impressive. 
The next one is a noir film that, um, based on a novel by Dashiell Hammett. Most people know Dashiell Hammett from um, uh, his novel uh, The Thin Man or The Maltese Falcon, which was adapted three times <laughs> as a film before they finally got it right the third time with uh, it was Bogart's film. Anyway, a uh, really great writer. Uh, he was a Pinkerton detective before he was a writer. And he didn't write many novels. He, he had a few out, and this is one of them. This is an adaptation of it. It's Brian Dunleavy, which I love. I love Brian Dunleavy. Veronica Lake, whom I love. And Alan Ladd, who's pretty cool, too. Dashiell Hammett's The Glass Key. Now, I do own this on DVD. But for archival reasons, I wanted it. And it's got a pretty snazzy cover. I like it. Um, directed by Stuart Heisler. So, there's that. Okay, next one is a Billy Wilder film. I saw it on TCM. Really fell in love with it. There's a Blu-ray of this in the UK uh, from Masters of Cinema. But I haven't bought it yet. I'm kind of waiting for it. To see if maybe the Criterion Collection will pick it up. But it's been a while and I kind of want to own it on Blu-ray. So I might just end up buying it from the UK. But uh, until then, I have the Laserdisc. And this is a pretty damn cool movie. Ray Milland won an Academy Award for this film. Jane Wyman plays his wife. It was written and directed by Billy Wilder. The Lost Weekend. It's about a guy, he's a... Uh, has alcohol problems. <laughs> that's that's actually mildly putting it putting it mildly. He goes on like a weekend long bender. It's really kind of a hard movie to watch, but really, really great stuff. The Lost Weekend. Do check that out if you ever see it on like TCM or something like that. Okay, this next film is a film by Vincent Minnelli, um, Lana Turner, Kirk Douglas, Walter Pigeon, Dick Powell. Oh. Um, Barry Sullivan, Gloria Graham. Oh, yeah. um, this is a uh, this is this is this is Hollywood making a film about Hollywood, <laughs> and I haven't and I hadn't seen it before I bought this. I bought this and watched it the day that I received it. It's the bad and the beautiful uh, MGM UA Home Entertainment video. Got Kirk Douglas there, Jane Wyman, or that's not Jane Wyman, Lana Turner. It's a really good film, folks. Um, not a film I think I'd go back to every every month, but something that I think is nice to own. It's certainly worth having to see it. Some great performances in that too. So, uh, next is a film. It's actually a twofer. This is a double feature. One CLV laser disc because these films are both just barely over an hour long. Uh, one was made in 35, one was made in 34. Okay. And I own the first, I, I own one of them, and it's one of my favorite movies. It really is. If I, Had I that top 20 list, this movie would be in there somewhere. It's a Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi, kind of a uh, double feature. And uh, it's uh, The Raven, which I have yet to watch. And the Black Cat. Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi, uh, David Manners. Directed by Edgar G. Ulmer, who um, was a uh, one of the German emigres to come over to the States. And he would have had a pretty huge career in Hollywood. I feel sure that he would have. But um, he got caught... Um, with a universal uh, executive's either wife or fiance. So uh, he was pretty much banished to the Poverty Row Studios for most of his life. That said, he still made some pretty damn good movies. Um, Detour, uh, which is on, uh, which is a uh, film noir, being one of my favorites. And uh, The Black Cat is just, it's got, it's got elements of necrophilia, um, <laughs> uh, necrophilia, you've got, uh, elements of, um, vivisection, um, really, really, really 
perverse stuff for 1934. It's got a great look. Lugosi is really great. Karloff is just a, he's a satanic, sort of a satanic monk or priest. <laughs> yeah, there's a black mask, in, uh, black mass in this as well. Um, pretty, pretty, pr pr pretty cool stuff. <laughs> it's beautifully shot. Do check out the Black Cat. Make sure that you get the 1934 version because there is a second Black Cat that was made 10 or 15 years later that also starred Bela Lugosi. That's more of a comedy, so get the get the early one. This I paid I think four or five dollars for, and it was worth every damn penny. It is Black Cat is available on DVD, but it's part of the Boris Karloff. collection that Universal put out five or ten years ago. And really it should be the Karloff, a Karloff Lugosi set because I think most of the movies that are in it, Karloff also stars in as well. This next film is a film I've never seen. Um, the thing that kind of attracted me to it was the cover. And looking it up, I kind of got into the, uh, oops, the plot really kind of interested me. Uh, Kelly McGillis, Jeff Daniels, it's a Peter Yates film. It's a punch-out, but that's okay, because I really just want to watch it. It's the uh, House on Carroll Street. Sort of a, looks like a neo-noir, perhaps, type film. But it's got uh, spies, Nazi war, cr war criminals, all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> uh, so, I haven't watched it yet. I'm thinking it'll be pretty good. I'm hoping so, anyway. If not, that's okay, too. Next one, a uh, film that I think I probably own on a couple public domain collection DVDs, but um, I'd rather have a laser disc of it. It's a, it's a great film with uh, Basil Rathbone, Nigel Bruce. Who am I speaking of? That is, uh, it's Sherlock Holmes. Dress to Kill, Laserdisc, pretty cool stuff there, nothing that's going to send you over the moon, but um, it's a fun little flick. Finally, from Laserdisc Vault, this is my last one, and I do have this on DVD, but I love the art, for archival reasons I wanted it, um, and for all those little reasons that we buy things like this, um, James Cagney. Humphrey Bogart. This is Bogart before he became top bill uh, as an actor. It is the Roaring Twenties. I saw this in film class in college, and it really kind of stuck with me. Um, got a very interesting ending, by the way. It's all about uh, these two guys that meet and uh, have a. They are in a, they meet in the trenches of World War One, and. Uh, they kind of come back to the, to America, and they start their own little bootlegging operation. And, you know, the, it becomes a gangster film. Um, it's really good. Really, really good. Priscilla Lane, she's awesome in this. Frank McHugh. Uh, of course, Bogart. Mark Hellinger uh, wrote the story and produced it, I believe. And it was direct... Robert Ro Rawson also wrote it. Uh, or co-wrote it, directed by Raoul Walsh, who's a great director for Warner Brothers and later other studios. So, The Roaring Twenties, great movie, love owning it. Now, the next collection I got, I purchased from an uh, eBay uh, seller I'd never worked, uh, done any business with before. These discs were amazingly cheap. <laughs> and I was a little bit worried about what I was going to see when I got them. Um, but the guy was pretty honest about his description, and some of these aren't in the best shape, but I think, you know, he was honest about what he, he, he said about them, and they're not terrible, and they're pretty cool. Now this first one, I'm a James Bond fanatic. I own the, uh, the big Blu-ray box set, the Bond 50 set. Um, I own all the DVD sets that came before it. Um, never had them on Laserdisc, though. Not until recently, I got the Criterion versions of uh, Dr. No and I believe it was Thunderball. Maybe it was from Russia with Love. Anyway, 
Um, so I decided, you know what, there are a lot of Bond releases on Laserdisc. And what the hell, they're cheap enough, why not try to start collecting them? You know? So, this is um, Roger Moore, a film that I did not like as a kid, but I've grown to really respect it now. It does have flaws. A lot of them. Um, it is Octopusher. I believe that's Robert McGuire, or Robert McGinnis art. Uh, it's a two disc set, CLV. Maud, I believe this is full frame. Maud Adams, I believe she's the only Bond girl to come back and do a second Bond film. So, it's pretty cool. Her first was The Man with the Golden Gun. Okay, my battery is starting to die on me. So, um, there's a few Bond films in this set, so we'll... You know, I'll talk about them. The second film I got from the seller was one of the better Hitchcock films. I ended on that Blu-ray set, the Hitchcock Blu-ray set that came out a couple years ago. But, uh, again, for completest sake, for archival sake, is Vertigo, which is really an amazing effing movie. And it's really perverse, and it's really messed up. <laughs> um, you gotta see it. Amy Stewart, Kim Novak, oof. Barbara Bel Geddes. Yeah, very good movie. Where to go? So, uh, next. Okay, this I have to tell a little backstory because you're gonna wonder why the hell I got this. Um, I had. Um, this is a sequel to a film. And the seller had this the first film on Laserdisc as well. I was going to buy both the original first film and the sequel. Um, but he was charging a bit more for the original first film. And for the condition that it was in, I really didn't think it was worth paying like seven or eight bucks, but it just wasn't worth it to me. I could find a better copy with a little more expensive, but nicer. But I did buy the end up buying the the sequel anyway because I bought it because I, I wanted them to complement each other. Um, but anyway, uh, it's Pet Cemetery to raise some hell uh, with uh, Edward Furlong right there. Whatever happened to him, man? Uh, Pet Cemetery 2 was not that great a film, I'll be honest with you. Many problems it has. I didn't absolutely hate it, but it certainly wasn't nearly as creepy as uh, the first Pet Cemetery film. This is actually sealed. So is that Vertigo, by the way. That, that Vertigo, copy of Vertigo, was sealed as well. I think it's pretty cool. You still got the $35 price tag on it. So I will end up getting the companion. Well, this is the companion piece, but. The, uh, the first Pet Cemetery film on Laserdisc because I really like it, it's really creepy and um, I want to watch it. So This next film is a film I'm not sure that you've heard of. You, you, you may have. Uh, it's from the mind of George Lucas. Um, I think he just wrote the story outline for it, but it's a great film. It really appeals to my kind of sensibility and my nostalgia for everything that is uh, sort of old and dusty. <laughs> Um, Radio Land Murders with Brian Ben Ben. What the hell ever happened to Brian Epping Ben Ben? I don't know. Mary Stuart Masterson looking all nice. Got a nice cast. Ned Beatty's in there. He's got a good part in it. Okay, this is a film that was remade in 2001. This is the original from 2000, I'm sorry, from 1975. Norman Jewison directed. This is full framed, but it's okay because I, I, I haven't, I don't own the DVD. James Kahn, John Hausman, Maud Adams. It is a uh, rollerball, which is a great film. Don't, don't watch the 2000 remake. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. James Conn, Rollerball, definitely check it out. 
It's a two disc set, by the way. This is a sealed copy of a Hitchcock movie, and this is really this is my favorite Hitchcock film, and I would say it's up there as far as like my favorite movies go as well. I do own the DVD. I actually own it on Laserdisc, but again, complete a sake. Strangers on a Train. Got Robert Walker there. Farley Granger's in there somewhere with Ruth Woolman. And I just read that David Fincher and the author of... Was it Gone Girl? I think that's what it's called. Um... They are working on readapting this. This has a screenplay by Patricia Highsmith and none other than Raymond Chandler. The next film is a Robert Altman film. This is um, I had this on VHS years ago. I do believe it is out on Criterion DVD. There is a Criterion Laserdisc of this film, but um, the guy that I bought it from didn't have it, and this was I think two dollars and. I had a hard time <laughs> saying no. It is uh, Robert Altman's um, really great film based on the writings of Raymond Carver. Shortcuts. Like a three and a half, four hour long movie. Huge cast. Andy McDowell, Bruce Davidson, Julianne Moore, Matthew Modine, Ann Archer, Fred Ward, Jennifer Jason Lee, Chris Penn, Lily Taylor, Robert Downey Jr., Madeline Stowe. Whatever happened to Madeline Stowe, man? Uh, Tim Robbins, Lily Tomlin, Tom Waits, Frances McDormand, Peter Gallagher, Andy Ross, Lori Singer, Jack Lemmon, Lyle, Lyle Lovett, Buck Henry, and Huey Lewis. And I will say that Huey Lewis um, exposes a little bit more of himself than maybe uh, we cared to see in this movie. But I guess he was excited to show off what he had. <laughs> Shortcuts. Great movie. Uh, in a previous video, I had mentioned um, I'm a Star Trek fan, but 60s Star Trek really only. Um, I do have the series on Blu-ray and DVD, but I, I bought a Laserdisc copy of The Cage, which was the pilot episode for Star Trek, with Jeffrey Hunter playing Captain Pike. This was before even Captain Kirk was a bad thought. <laughs> it, was, um, <clears throat> it was originally Captain Pike. Anyway, um, I decided I wanted to kind of get the Star Trek TV series on Laserdisc bit by bit. And uh, the guy had it for $2, and this is a really good deal. It's in great shape. It's uh, Star Trek, The Conscious of the King, and Balance of Terror. Both pretty solid episodes. This one, I think, is one that most people will remember. Mark Leonard there as... Uh, uh, Romulan, Commander, begrudging respect, Captain Kirk. So, another one to my collection. Okay, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this is a film that I'm sure most of you have probably seen, maybe even own. It's another, con uh, it's a Connery Bond film. <clears throat> and, uh, again, this is a... Uh, one of the lower tiered laser disc releases of this, but um, it was cheap and I like it. And gold finger. What a crappy cover, though. I mean, really. They could have found like a piece of art, like um, poster art for this. But whatever. Sean Connery right there. And uh, oh gosh, Gert Froba. I didn't look for his name. Honor Blackman is in it. There is uh, Shirley Eaton. This has one of my favorite lines of any movie. <clears throat> um, it's uh, Honor Blackman. They're in the plane. Honor Blackman wakes up Sean Connery. And she says, My name is Pussy Gallo. And Connery says, I must be dreaming. It's a great film. Okay, another Bond. This is a two disc laser disc set. Again, it's a very lower tiered version of it. Um, and I really, this is one of the only 
Bond films I cannot stand. And I was even unsure if I should buy it or not, but because he was combining my shipping and this was maybe a dollar, <laughs> I, you know, like, what, 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 what the hell? It's for your eyes only. Of course, Mr. Roger Moore, who was getting way too old to play Bond. I love Roger Moore, but um, maybe not for his work on Bond. The next film I have here is a uh, movie that I don't know that's actually ever been on DVD. It might be, uh, but I've never come across it. But I've never actually saw it either. But uh, when I saw it, that the seller had this, um, it's from Whit Stillman, a uh, writer director that uh, produced uh, some really great sort of coming of age '90s comedy dramas in uh, the mid to late '90s. Um, well, early, mid, and late 90s. He did a great film called Metropolitan, which is on the Criterion Collection. And in 97 or 98, he directed a film called The Last Days of Disco, which I love that movie. And that's on the Criterion Collection as well. I have that on Blu-ray. <clears throat> this was sort of like his in-between film. It's not been... It's not as talked about as some of these other films. But um, it's really good, I think. Um... I used to have it on VHS uh, back in the day. Barcelona. Uh, from 19 and 90. I'm not sure. I probably should have looked this up before I started recording. 94. Um, <clears throat> movies like this, Whit Stillman especially, remind me, but in a better way, of like that uh, Lena Dunham show on HBO, Girls. Um, I'm not really a fan of it, but my wife loves it. So I've seen quite a few episodes of it, and uh, featuring like a lot of really um, 20, 21 year old, 22 year old sort of really self-absorbed um, people coming out of, uh, you know, uh, college and trying to start off on their own in New York. And it can be really, really tedious. <laughs> Hard to watch because these people are just so self-absorbed. Yet You don't really like them, and I kind of feel sorry for them. <laughs> um, not a fan, but what Stillman does a pretty good job of portraying the same type of character but in a more sympathetic and uh, likable uh, way. So, anyway, that's my theory on that. Next film, uh, this is another one of those films that, you know, I, I wonder why I have it. And I'm not sure. I bought it from the seller for just a few dollars. Um, I think because of the screenwriter more than anything. I really like the screenwriter. Um, kind of a weird reason to want to own a film, but uh, that's what I got. It's a deluxe widescreen presentation. Jeff Goldblum and Christine Lottie. It is Hideaway. Sort of a late, mid to late 90s special effects horror film. Uh, it was based on a novel from, uh, I believe, uh, Dean Koontz, whom I never really read. I never really read his stuff. But it's written by Andrew Kevin Walker. A guy, I, I called his name a couple different times. Um, I believe it was Seven, the first film I saw his name. Seven, the uh, the Seven Deadly Sins, you know, uh, Brad Pitt and um, Morgan Freeman. Anyway, it's a great Criterion laser disc of that, by the way. You should seek that out. And I kind of wondered what else he was doing. And he had written some other smaller films. Um, he did a movie called Brain Scan which um, I actually own on DVD. Uh, it's not a bad movie, uh, for, for what it is. And uh, he went on to do some films like, uh, he did a, his script for 8mm, um, which was made into a film with Nicolas Cage by Jules Schumacher. The movie itself I thought was good, but apparently there's a big difference in the script and the final film. I did buy the script eventually, and uh, yeah, and his version is way better. <laughs> Anyway. Next movie I own on 
uh, DVD, Laserdisc, Blu-ray. I own the Criterion version of this Laserdisc. It was not a Criterion DVD or Blu-ray. Fortunately, this was the first Criterion Laserdisc, and I bought that. But this is not the Criterion version. This is distributed by Image. The reason why I bought this is because it has an exclusive commentary track that uh, has not been duplicated. Maybe you've heard of it. Citizen Kane. Um, you know, I can't sit here and tell you that Citizen Kane is my favorite movie, or even in my top 20 favorite movies. My proverbial top 20 favorite movies. It isn't. But I can't help and watch this movie and say, this is, this is a masterpiece. This is genius. Citizen Kane. Um, it's on all those top 10 lists, or top 100 lists, BFI, AFI, Sight and Sound, all those lists, for a reason. You know? Um, considered to be one of the greatest American films ever made. And I'd have a hard time disagreeing with that. So. Uh, any new commentary, or not new, but any commentary track that I haven't heard, or a bit of information that I haven't heard or seen about that movie, I, uh, I uh, want to check out. So, um, yeah. Next movie is a film from 1997, I want to say. It's a, so it was a Miramax film written by a guy named Scott Rosenberg, who's a great sort of a... He writes really great dialogue, really kind of quick, sharp, knives out, really good, funny dialogue. Um, he wrote a film called Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead, which I think is a great film with Andy Garcia. Um, but this is... Uh, has Matt Dillon... Uh, Matt Dillon, who else? Timothy Hutton, Rosie O'Donnell, and a bunch of other people that I'm sure you've seen. Mira Servino, Uma Thurman, Michael Rappaport. Um, it's a Ted Demi film, and it's got a killer soundtrack. It is Beautiful Girls... I believe Mill Creek or one of those Echo, or Echo Bridge, one of those really kind of cheapy companies released this on Blu-ray, and I bought it. And the transfer doesn't look bad; it doesn't. Uh, certainly not the best, but uh, this is a, a film that I think is worth owning. You know, on multiple different formats, and it's got a great—I mean, it's got a great poster art. You know, beautiful girls. It's all about a guy who comes home to a small town from, uh, I guess, New York City uh, for his 10-year high school reunion. And uh, it's just, it's kind of a coming-of-age story, seeing his friends from back in high school growing up and um, how everything is 10 years after high school. I, I can pretty much relate to that. Well, not anymore. It's been way over 10 years since I graduated. But um, certainly I, I, I could... It's very easy to kind of watch that and think, yeah, you know, I know that guy. I know him. I thought that. <laughs> um, it's a great film. It's Beautiful Girls. Do check that out. Okay, this next film, I don't own this on DVD or anything else. Uh, it was released on DVD, but uh, I believe it's out of print. Uh, this is MGM UA home video release. Two disc set, black and white, two hours, two minutes long. And it's uh, Susan Hayward, based on a true story, actually. Robert Wise film, I Want to Live. It's got a gatefold, actually. Oh, didn't see that coming. Sorry, it's a little hard to... Put that on the screen. Uh, here's the back cover. And it also, this what fell out of the box was a, sort of a little MGM checklist of the different films that it came with that, that you could buy, which is quite a few actually. Uh, so, anyway, I'm looking forward to watching this. We only have two more.
So, almost done. Uh, this film is a great uh, comedy written by John Cleese. Um, it is not A Fish Called Wanda, uh, but it has most of the same cast from A Fish Called Wanda. And this is a hilarious film. I saw it years ago. I haven't watched it. Oh my gosh, I probably haven't seen this but the one time, actually. Uh, it's hilarious. Um, I believe it's out of print on DVD. Fierce Creatures. Very funny stuff. If you're a fan of A Fish Called Wanda, uh, you will definitely enjoy this film. And the last film, um, again, with the universal horror here, um, I'm not sure what sparked me to buy this because it's not a great film. And I guess the 99 cent price tag threw me over the edge. Son of Dracula. It's Lon Chaney Jr. there. And he is not... He's no Bella Lugosi. And I, something else that kind of attracted me to this film was, just for from a historical perspective, <clears throat> it was written by Kurt, uh, Kurt Siodmak, um, who came, uh, he was one of those many people, he and his brother came uh, to the United States from Germany <clears throat> and went into the picture, the picture business. And Kurt Siodmak, Curtis here, he's billed as, wrote a lot of different films for um, Universal and other companies as well. Mostly horror films, though, and uh, most notably The Wolfman, which also starred Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, but this is also directed by his brother, Robert Siodmak. He made some great films, and this being one of his lesser films, I, you know, it's still interesting from a, I already showed you, from, I guess, from that kind of perspective. And so that's going to do it for today. I don't think I have much else to talk about. I'm sure I've talked way too much anyway. But uh, it's been a lot of fun, and I'll do another one of these videos soon. I want to start t doing my collection, but uh, I get like so many different shipments come in, and I want to share them with you guys. Uh, there's a couple things that... Uh, there's one... There's two lots of laser discs beyond the laser discs I bought um, very inexpensively. That'll be coming in hopefully by next week. And I think I may have won a few auctions, keeping my fingers crossed. Um, so if I win those, of course, I will be sharing it with all of you. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And um, comment, like, subscribe, if you will. Until next time, I'm Steve, and uh, see you later.